So thank you everyone for joining the Brain 220, Gardening and Evolving Your Brain. We're really taking your brain knowledge to the next level on today's webinar. And we're gonna be talking about more advanced features within the application. Now, every Friday, I teach a Brain 101 class. And the purpose of the Brain 101 is really to give people an introduction to the brain. We talk about the basics, how to create a thought, how thoughts are related to one another, parent thoughts, child thoughts, jump thoughts, and then adding notes and, and content and syncing that information to the cloud. Today, we're assuming that you are familiar with all of these processes, and uh, we're really gonna be talking about more advanced features we'd like you to know about within the application. I won't be able to cover every single feature of the entire Brain app. So if there's something specific you want to know more about, uh, importing, exporting, or, or just any particular feature of the application, please feel free to write that into the GoToMeeting question panel. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm starting off today with a sample Brain that you can actually download from our website. If you go to our website, www.thebrain.com, forward slash apps, A-P-P-S. There are many different sample uh, webinars for you to choose from on different topics, whether it's uh, business management, uh, networking, whatever the subject matter may be, there are sample brains for each one of those pages that you can download. And this is our featured brain, we call it one brain for all. And it's a really just general vanilla brain with a lot of different categories uh, that you can start adding your own information to. And what I've done is I've taken this brain and um, I've added a little bit of my own information as well. And as you can see on the screen, I've got a lot of content that's showing up here under the area of my personal life. I've been really good maybe about keeping track of my work and putting in things into specific categories so I can easily get to my client thoughts, my marketing thoughts, operations. But for my personal life, when I get some information I need, I like, I just kind of throw it here into the brain. And it's time to reorganize this area. We typically call this gardening is the phrase that we like to use. And uh, it's really just a way of cleaning up your brain, refreshing different areas from time to time. Whether you're spending the day gardening in a particular area of your brain, or just when you happen to wander into a particular area and say, wow, this is kind of a mess, I need to clean things up. I'm sharing with you some tips and tricks to help you do that. Now, before I start cleaning this area of my brain up, you can see I've got all these different categories. It's all related to my personal life, banking, uh, home renovations, uh, music, sports, snorkeling, there's people, Jeremy, Lisa, my fitness plan. So it's all directly related to me but it's becoming difficult to find the information because it's I've got too many child thoughts underneath personal life. If I wanna look up my, go into my investing area, I can certainly go down to, because you can see it's alphabetical order. So H-I insurance, but investing isn't there. And actually I do know it's here. Oh, here it is, my investment. So I, I named it my investment. So alphabetically I didn't find it right away. We can fix this. We can apply a few different features to the application that will really clean this area up. It won't take long, and we'll be able to quickly and easily find what we're looking for. I want to share with you just my own personal brain that I use on a daily basis. Um, if you ever have joined me on a Brain 101, sometimes I share the brain and I mention that I'm all into cooking. I really love cooking bread these baking bread these days. This area of my brain, I just noticed in a 101 class a few weeks ago, it was starting to get just, as you saw in the other brain, a little bit sloppy. I had a lot of thoughts, recipes, supplies, tools, videos, and things like that. So I simply spent about five, 10 minutes, went in and made some categories. Breakfast, uh, breakfast types of bread, materials that I use. I've got an area for rejected recipes, or re recipes that I've tried and whatever, the dough is too wet, the flavor isn't what I was expecting, or it was too complicated, so I keep track of those. And then the sourdough recipes that I am currently working on or using from time to time are just simply under sourdough. So I can get to my sourdough, I can get to my research, I'm always looking for different videos and, and tips and tricks, 
And it's really nice to have a couple of simple subcategories group my thoughts together to easily find what I'm looking for. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna do here in my messy brain. Um, so the first thing I see right off the top of my, uh, the top of this list is an airline rewards number. Um, I do like to travel, and so I've got a lot of travel uh, thoughts down below. So I'm gonna create a new child thought simply called travel. And I'm gonna activate this thought. So that's my current active thought. And when I have another thought that's appearing as a sibling, I can click and drag that thought to reorient how it's attached to the current active thought. Far right, it's going to be a sibling thought. In other words, it's gonna be linked up to the parent. If I go above, it's gonna be a parent thought of travel. Ch uh, jump thought and child thought down below. So I can simply drag it around the active thought until I can find, or until I do find the specific location I like. So. Airline rewards will simply fall under travel. And if I scroll down through my list here, I'm sure I'll find some other travel thoughts and snorkeling and diving, that should fall under travel. Tropical vacations falls under travel. And there I've got my urban travel thought. So I may have some more. I may, uh, as I'm cleaning up this area, hasn't made that much of a big impact yet, uh, but I've got that category for travel that I'll keep continue moving things over into um, as I clean this area of the brain. Now, I also see a lot of friends and family. I've got a lot of family names, so I'm gonna do the same thing, create a new child thought, and I'll group those together. So I can always come back and modify if I do want a separate friends and family thought, uh, I can certainly do that, and I'm gonna, move these thoughts in a little bit of a different way. I'm going to, uh, let's just go ahead and click on Molly and Dave, for example. Now let's say I can still see friends and family as a, uh, um, as a sibling thought over there. Uh, but regardless, if I'm not paying attention, I don't see this and I want Molly and Dave to be a child thought of friends and family. For this scenario, I'm gonna click and drag as if I'm creating a new parent thought. And there it is, friends and family. Uh, again, if you're familiar with the brain, you know that this is called the existing thought list. So anytime you start typing in the name of a thought, if it still exists, the brain, the, your digital brain will remind you that thought exists. I can double click and make Dave and Molly, or Molly and Dave, a child thought of friends and family. But here is the catch. There's sort of a hidden feature within this scenario that allows me to make friends and family the exclusive parent of Molly and Dave. And that is simply by uh, pressing on the shift key. So I press shift on my keyboard, double click on friends and family, and notice that friends and family, are it's the only parent thought above Molly and Dave. So that shift key, when you hold it down to connect a thought to a new parent, it makes that new parent the exclusive parent. Um, and here with Brigitte, she's a friend as well. So I'm gonna click and drag, hover over friends and family, but I press on the shift key and that is the only parent. So it's a subtle little difference. Holding down the shift key will remove whatever other parent thoughts that particular thought had and link just the one. So in other words, if you're linking, you know, Brendan, for example, had another link to a project that he was working on with me at work. So he's got two parent thoughts, quite possible. When I hold down that shift key, I'm removing any and all other parent thoughts. So the only parent thought above them is friends and family. So that's the shift key and that's, we refer to that as the exclusive parent feature, holding down that shift key to remove. And it's just a nice little time saver. Um, so here's Jason, I can even work in this particular view. I can still see friends and family here. And so I can just click and get to friends and family. I press on shift, Jason's moved, Jeremy is moved, there's Lisa, friends and family. I press on shift. I know you can't see my keyboard, but you can see that Laura, for example, is no longer going to be a child thought of personal life. So the shift key is, is a nice, just little subtle time saver. Um, 
Another thing that you can do, I'm going to create an area called hobbies. Another thing you can do that saves a little bit of time is create a temporary pin. I'm going to right click on hobbies and select to create a pin. So it's a little difficult to find these new thoughts like travel. I know it's in here somewhere, but with all my text being the same color um, and this large cluster of thoughts we have, when I click and drag something over to travel, it's hard to find right away. Um, so hobbies, again, it just sort of blends in, but here technology is a hobby I'm interested in. I can always see, and I'll hold shift here too. I can always see those pins, and I'll just keep that pin there for as long as I'm doing this activity. And again, I'm holding down the shift key. Music, that's a hobby, so shift. And mom and dad, all like mom and dad. See how it's hard to find friends and family as shift, click, and I moved mom and dad. And there's Mark P. Same time, just click. Oh, and I clicked him to fitness plan. So you can see it backfired on me just a little bit. I hovered over the wrong thought. Um, so Mark P belongs under friends and family. Not a problem. It's okay to make mistakes. You can always go back and fix, you can undo. Um, I can click on edit, undo, and just roll back one. You can see I've been doing a lot of clicking and changing links here, uh, but I can just remove the link uh, via undo, or I can use the feature that I just shared with you. Mark is a friend of mine, so I'm going to link him up to, there's friends and family. I shift and, and double click. So Mark is not a child thought of my fitness plan. So speaking of fitness plan, that falls under health and fitness. So let's create a new child thought. So this will be my healthy eating and fitness plan. I've got a lot of thoughts like that. So I'm gonna share with you another option that you have. And this one is particularly important. We're gonna be spending a lot of time on, on this feature today. Um, and it's a way of mass selecting groups of thoughts and making sweeping changes to a brain. Um, and there's many things that you can do when you select a group of thoughts, you can delete them all at once. You can copy them and paste them into a document. You can copy them and paste them into another brain. We'll be doing that. And on a Windows machine that is done with a control click and on a Mac that is done with the command click. So control click, command click, depending on your environment. It'll add the thought that you click on to the selection box. So I just created my uh, health and fitness, and I'm gonna start adding anything related to health and fitness as a child thought, move that as a child thought underneath that thought. So here's healthy eating. I am going to control click. So when I control click on a thought, it opens up the selection pain over on the, the far left of, of the brain. So you can see healthy eating has, we refer to these as marching ants. I think that's a sort of a universal terminology and technology. So it's got the little animated marching ants going around it. And I know that's a current selected thought. So as I'm selecting other thoughts that are related to health and fitness, such as my healthy living, I'll control click there. I'll see any and all thoughts that have uh, that have been selected. So here's my fitness plan, fitness goal. If I accidentally click on something that doesn't belong there, cute dog photos. Cute dog photos has nothing to do with health and fitness. I made a mistake. So I can control click on it again. So it's just a toggle switch, select and unselect. And I can even control click and control click up here in the selection box. So it doesn't matter where you control click on the thought, if it's selected, it becomes unselected. Um, you can also take a little breather, leave the selection box open. Maybe I've got something under health and fitness over here under you know my action items. I don't, this is a sample brain, there's nothing here. Let's say there was. Um, so under action items, we've got to buy a new scale. So first thing that came to mind, it's an action item that I need to take care of. It's also related to health and fitness. 
So I'm gonna control click and add it into my selection box. My other thoughts are still selected. So if I'm not holding down the control key on my Windows machine, I can continue just navigating around through the brain looking for thoughts that I want to add to the selection. Because there's so much that you can do with this selection box, it's really important to know that you can click around without the control click. And then when you see something that does need to be added to health and fitness, such as my medical information, again, I just simply control click. So I think I'm good with my selection. Let me scan really quickly. I don't see anything else that's jumping out at me at health and fitness. So now that I've selected these spots, I am going to go to the health and fitness, make that the current active thought, leaving my selection box open. I right click in my selection box and I am going to select. Now we're gonna talk about all that you see here in this context menu. I'm gonna scroll down to link the selected thoughts as children of my current active thought, which is health and fitness. So in one fell swoop, I've taken these six other thoughts and made them child of personal of uh, health and fitness. I can now return back to personal life, right click and unlink the selection. So anything that's relate, linked to personal life that is selected is no longer linked to personal life. So that did not affect my action item, which is to buy a scale. That's not been unlinked from its original thought. Only when I had personal life as the active thought, right click unlink, I unlink from this thought, any thoughts that were selected. And of course I can close that selection box there and I've quickly moved those thoughts uh, into the uh, their new proper home. So I've got, I see another item, which is finance. And I'm gonna start, this is the way up that I like to do it because I can scroll through the list. There's banking, um, if I scroll down, house repairs, there's insurance, my investments. A lot of pet stuff, may oh, retirement planning, that should go. And upcoming expenses, here's my trip plans. That goes under travel. I'll jump back over to travel and move my upcoming trip plans. So that's a way that really, really works with me is viewing that in this scenario. I've got that long cluster and I can move the brain down so I can really see most of my thoughts as siblings, so it gives more real estate to the sibling area. I'm gonna create a new area for my house. Anything that has to do with my house, I can now click and drag. So if I scroll down, finance, gardening, gardening, goes under house, home renovations, house repairs, those both go there under house. And I think that should be it. Uh, so let's start cleaning things up really quickly. Let me go back to friends and family. And I see a lot more friends. Shelly, there's Brian. And Spencer, Tom, and Vince. And I think I still have my pet area to do as well. So I'm going to create an area just specifically for pet stuff. Let's go ahead and do the control click feature. So uh, animal adoption, I really am into that. So I'm gonna control click and keep dog photos, dog training and house, my recipes, pet food links, my pet sitters and my vets. So I'm gonna right click. This is a little dangerous to do because if I get distracted and close my uh, selection box, I'll have to go through and meticulously find those thoughts. We'll talk about how you can do that a little bit later today. But I'm gonna unlink those. So they're just floating. They're still in my brain, but they're not linked to anything. That's why I say it's a little bit dangerous because if I accidentally close this, I have to find them in the reports under my uh, orphan thought list but I still have that selection box open so I can go to my thought for pet stuff. And I right click and I link as children of pet stuff. So we're moving light right along and, and uh, cleaning this area up. Just a few other 
So stress, art and culture should go under hobbies. And um, if I go under my, oh, restaurants, I love food. Let's see if I have a food category. Well, I'll just keep that under hobbies for now. So restaurants, I can always come back and clean that up later. And still Grandpa Robert, he goes under friends and family. And what I'm reading now is a hobby as well. So hobbies for reading. And there's August, he goes under friends and family. So just simply dragging and dropping from the uh, sibling thought to my child thought. And let's see, wow, that is a pretty big difference. So now under personal life, I think we've been on the call here for, well, I started clicking around about 10 minutes ago. So in 10 minutes, I've shared with you a couple of different ways to start grouping thoughts together, selecting thoughts and grouping them. And now I've got these eight categories, finance, friends, health, hobbies, house recipes, uh, pet stuff, and travel. Oh, recipes, that goes food. So under hobbies, recipes, and then I can create a subcategory here called food. And under food, that's where I'll move restaurants and my recipes. And I think I had another thing called healthy eating. So I'm gonna use the existing thought list to find that healthy eating, which I had moved previously under health and fitness. That goes under both categories. My healthy eating is all gonna be all about um, you know, movies to watch about whether I should be vegetarian or not, or whatever information I have on healthy eating or calorie counters or what have you. It'll go here. Some days I'm thinking of it as health and fitness. Other days I'm thinking of it as a food topic. So regardless, I'll still be able to find that information. Just like medical should also go under my finance. There it is. So I'm not shift clicking on the existing thought list. I'm just clicking to keep both of those links. And that's a huge difference. I've really, really cleaned up this area of my brain. And just to show you, I took a screenshot before we started of what my brain looked like in under personal life. And here it is. Um, so we can see specifically. Oh, my computer, there we go. Uh, so this is exactly what we started with today when we started the call. And here is what my brain looks up now. Big, big difference. And what does it cost me? About 10 minutes of clean things up and then another click. If I want to get to, you know, Jason and find, look up Jason's phone number, give him a call, see if he's interested in going for a bike ride this weekend. No, he's not directly there under my personal life thought. Uh, it's pretty obvious he's going to be under friends and family. I click and it's much easier to find that Jason thought. He's not blending in with all my house repairs and insurance and dog photos and, and so forth. So let's take this on to the next level as well. And this is a great category under friends and family. Um, you know, we did clean the brain up. I moved all of those miscellaneous people that were just under personal life into their own category. So I know these are only people thoughts. But there's still a lot of information here, and some are friends, some are family. Actually, if some of them are even work colleagues of, of mine that qualify as a, a friend um, or part of my work family as well. But there's another way to clean up areas of your brain that have become cluttered, and that's simply identifying them with a thought type. So I really want to talk about uh, how we can set up thought types and the advantage of thought types, using thought types in your brain. Um, so I know I have an existing thought type in this, uh, this particular brain for work colleagues. And a thought type is simply another classification for a thought. Um, you can hover over the thought to find out what category it fits into. Uh, for example, Harlan is a work colleague of mine. So I'm gonna right click on the Harlan thought and open up the uh, cons menu and select a thought type. There's a few different ways to get to your thought type list and I'll share those with you. But I'm gonna set Harlan up as the thought type of coworker. So notice that it adds an icon. You can assign icons to thought types. When I hover over Harlan's thought, I see that Harlan is a coworker. Um, and uh, also it changed the thought green. 
So you can change all these attributes of a thought type and they'll visually, visually appear with these attributes in your brain, thus adding greater context to the, the structure that you're creating. So think of this in terms of you know, a project that you're working on with, uh, with uh, one of your business colleagues, and you've got a list of all your next steps, and each step in that project that you're working on has its own thought. Some steps are more important than others. You know, before you turn your computer on, you have to plug in your computer or build the computer or you know, build the database before you start running queries on it. So there's phase one, phase two, phase three. You can create thought types for these to easily identify them in a cluster of thoughts. And that's exactly what we're doing in this area of the brain. Now, when I activate that thought, you can see that Harlan falls under the category of coworker. Um, and that's visualized in the Plex. Thought types by default will appear in the Plex. So I'll see that he's a child thought of coworker, but I can turn that feature off. If I just want the re visual reminder when I see the thought, but I don't need to see the link, I can right click and you can identify a thought type by its rounded corners, uh, as opposed to a native thought, which just has square edges. I'll right click on a thought type and just select the option that I don't need to see this. So I'm unchecking visible when parent of the active thought. So just uncheck that. So I don't need to see that. The visual is enough for me. And this is typically my default setting. I turn off those um, thought types being visualized in the Plex. So I'll just visually see that Harlan is a coworker. I've got a few other coworkers here. Brigitte, I'm going to right click. And I'll say that Brigitte is thought type coworker. And I'll do another one. Uh, here's Shelly, uh, friend and coworker. And so I'm gonna activate Shelly's thought properties display. Anytime you click on the active thought, or if you alt click on any thought on the brain, you're opening up the thought properties display. And this is where we can add attributes. I usually share this in the Brain 101 and share with you that you can change the color, you can change the label, add your own custom icon. Well, you can also define thought types and thought tags. So with her thought properties display open, I don't need to manually change the font to green, add the same icon. I just open up the list of available thought types I have and say that Shelly is a coworker. So she inherits those attributes of the coworker thought type. So let's create a new thought type together. I'm just gonna create a thought type for friends because I've got a lot of friends down here. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the little uh, button on the brain menu up above and type in friend. As you can see, nothing, if I just type in the letter F, I'll see all thought types that contain the letter F. So there's software, no, that's not what I want. Friend, it doesn't exist, so I'm gonna create a new thought type called friend. With friend, the thought type as the current active thought, I can open up its thought properties display. So all my friends will be a light blue font with a dark blue background. That looks kind of cool. And I'm gonna click on the icon. I love using the brain's stock icon. We've got 2,000 stock icons to choose from. Oh, I came right to the, um, I'm on the browse and I bet I have people selected. Yeah, there's many different categories. So I can click to find an image for multimedia or home and buildings, um, uh, school and education. Here's people. So a friend, um, let's have these little two little people shaking hands. So that's my friend's little icon. And when I go to my friends and family thought, I'm gonna select all my friends and I'm gonna go back to that control click feature because that's gonna save me the most time. Brendan is a friend of mine, Jason, Jeremy, Lisa, Laura, there's Mark and Vince and Tom. So I've added them all to my selection box. This time I'm using the selection box a little bit differently. I right click and rather than changing links for a thought in this scenario, I'm changing attributes. So I'm assigning all of these people to the thought type of friend. And let's close the selection box. And you can start to see where I'm going with this. We went from a cluster of 
thoughts that were just simply uh, black text on a blue background. Now suddenly there's a little bit of value added. Uh, we've got a nice visual display that is sharing, showing us exactly who these people are, or how they may be related. And when I set up my own thought types and tags, I'm familiar with them. So I know that a star means it's important um, or a down, green down arrow or red down arrow means it's, you know, the status is less important, it's something like that. I'm left with all of my family's uh, members, so I'm gonna create a thought type for them. And again, I'll just go to the thought type button, type in family. It does not exist, so I can click on new type to create it. And for family, uh, I'm gonna use the uh, select icon feature a little bit differently. I'm gonna actually search for a heart. And there it is. So we've got a nice little heart for family. And I'll click to open. I can return and change this at any time. And I'll just make this sort of a medium gray background. And once again, I'm gonna go back to my friends and family list. And you've seen me so far, control click, control click, usually because I'm cherry picking in a large list. As you can see, all my family members are sort of grouped together right now. And this is very convenient for me because I'm going to click or, or excuse me, I'm going to press on my keyboard the control key and I'm going to drag. Instead of control clicking, I'm control dragging a box around a grouping of thoughts, added them to the selection box. I right click and I'm going to change the thought type to family. And there we go. Now, one last thing that I want to share with you uh, before I leave this brain and share a couple of different uh, examples in, in editing and, and advanced editing in the brain is that any changes that you do to a thought type or a thought tag for that matter, um, they are universally applied. So if I say, wow, that background for friends is really not working for me, it's the only thought type that has a sort of that dark background. So I'm gonna to go to my friends thought type and I'm gonna say, so just gonna reverse these. Uh, there's a little button here for reversing. So I've got dark text on a light background. Um, I can click and modify and select manually. I'm just gonna reverse the two of them. And let's see what that looks like. There we go, that's much easier and sort of more in uniform with the brain that I've, I've created. So it's a universal change. You change that thought type and it's applied to all thoughts of that type throughout your brain. One last feature regarding thought types is this list can be very, very well organized and it can really help you in the long run when you're running reports against your data. And what I mean is, if you notice this list, I've got all of these people icon, uh, thought types rather, um, appearing under the person thought type. So they're sub thought types, just like my projects, completed, green lighted, hot project, pending project, all falling under the thought type of project. Um, the advantage to that is that if I'm running a report and I say, show me all of my people in that report, I'll see all my people, whether they're a coworker, a director, an executive, an expert, a manager, et cetera. Or I can just say, show me all of my coworkers um, in my reports, because I'm reviewing those thoughts and adding notes or what have you. So I want my friend thought types and family thought types to be a subcategory of the person thought type. And it's very, very easy to do. Now that I've created these thought types, I can change how the, the thought types are linked. I'm gonna manually go to the friend thought type. So there are all my friends that I have, but I wanna make the friend thought type a child thought of person. So I type it in, there it is, I'll double click. And so friends, all of my friends fall under the master category or the, the what would that be called? It's a subcategory, the super category of person. And family, I want the same thing. I want them to be a subcategory of person. Double click. So let's go back and take a look at my uh, listing of different thought types that I have in this brain. And there you can see under person, I've got family and friends as subcategories. 
And if I'm running a report, let's talk about the reports a little bit today. Uh, by default, when you open up your report, you're reviewing or you're viewing all existing thoughts in alphabetical order. So this is a fairly small brain. I've got 150 thoughts there. And maybe I'm just doing a review of uh, with all of my coworkers. I want to easily get to all of my coworkers' thought thoughts. So I'm going to say, show me all of my thoughts that are of the thought type coworker. So I select that option, and as you can see, I've got uh, there's the coworker thought type itself, and then there's Brigitte, Harlan, and Shelley. Now, if I say, all right, show me all of my people, let's go back to that drop-down list. Oh, my brain's sort of off screen here. Let's bring that back on screen. All right, so instead of just saying, show me all of my coworkers, I want to say, show me all of anyone that's a person within my brain. And you can see 30 thoughts in this brain are people, whether they're a coworker, a family, friend, or what have you. So very, very useful to create those sub uh, thought types, and, and you can do the same with thought tags as well. Let's take just a moment to talk about thought tags before we get into another feature. Um, a thought tag, the difference between a tag and a type is that multiple tags can be applied to a thought, whereas a thought type is a, just a main category um, uh, that a thought falls under. So for example, I'll just use my people here, August, he is a family member. He's actually my son. He's always going to be a family member, um, but he may have many different attributes. So action items that need to happen, you know, with him or, or for him. Maybe we're planning an event together. So we need to, um, you know, we've got an action item to make a call. And whatever the action item is, maybe I'd have over on the notes, uh, we need to plan our end of summer camping trip. Great, I've got a nice little note there. How am I gonna be reminded about this note? Is an action item in my brain that I need to take care of. Other action items could be, I'm gonna go into my clients and I've got just some sample VIP clients here. Um, I need to call and see if they will be signing on for a new year of services. Very important that I call this particular client as soon as possible. So I'm gonna set up a thought tag called action items. Alpha is a client, so that would be their thought type. I don't have the thought type clients, but I could create that. August, my son, is thought type family. Uh, he'll also be family, but the thing that those two thoughts share in common it's an action item that I need to take care of. So I'm gonna use my thought tags for that feature. I really, really love using thought tags. I've got tags for action items, whether they're urgent or lower priority. I've got act, I've got thought tags for a, just a multitude of, of um, different reasons. Even attributes of a person. Uh, you know, my Brigitte thought in my brain is, uh, some of the tags are, um, speaks Swiss, speaks uh, Spanish, speaks German. Um, I need to know all of my friend, different friends or work colleagues that speak German, and I can find them that way by applying a thought tag. Um, so in this case, it's just an action item. So I'm gonna create a new thought tag called action. So once again, it creates the thought tag, and I can start assigning this to different thoughts. Um, I can also click on the tag just as I've done with other thoughts to apply attributes. Maybe I just want a cool little icon here for all my action items. I'll do a search for the word target. Sort of like an arrow in target. I think, of, yeah, I've got one, great. Oh, this is perfect. So there's my thought tag, the little icon that appear will appear for all of my action items. And one action item is I need to work with August so we can plan our family camping trip. So I'm going to apply the thought tag action item. And I'll go over to alpha and apply the thought tag action item. So what I can do then when I am logging into my brain from time to time I can review 
all of my action items. On Monday morning, I come in like, okay, what do I have? What's my day gonna look like today? I'm reviewing all of my action items. I recommend this particular feature quite a lot to people that have, you know, have that knowledge of how the brain works, but they're ready to have the brain start working more for them, uh, rather than just being a storage place for all of your info. Have your brain remind you of what info is important, what info is urgent um, or needs attention in a particular time frame. And I can even make this a pin. So I right click on action and select to make this a pin in my brain. So I always have that front and center. There's no excuse for me. When I log into my brain, I can click on that action item and see, ah, I've got something to do with family member August as well as a client. And like I said, you can apply multiple action items. So I'm gonna click and open up my list of action items. Maybe this is sort of a, I've got high cost clients and then medium and low cost clients, depending on how much money we're spending on them or they're spending with us. So I'm gonna mark this as a low cost uh, item. And um, let's say we also find out that, uh, and after our action item, I contact my client. They say, call next week. Um, so I can actually right click on a tag and replace it with, all right, this week, next week, or, or whatever type of, of next step it is. So let's say they, the, after the action item, they say, hey, we're signing on, but we're doubling what we're spending with you. We're really, really gonna invest in, in this process together. That's fantastic. I'm gonna remove the action item of, uh, of action. So I've had my discussion with them, but I'm also gonna move them from low cost. I'm gonna replace low cost with high cost. So now every time I'm reviewing my high cost clients, alpha is going to be there. So those are a couple of different ways that you can use thought types and tags within a brain simultaneously. Um, another feature that I wanted to uh, share with you is um, importing and exporting out of the brain. So let's talk about exporting first. And to do that, I'm actually gonna leave my uh, sample, this particular sample brain and jump into another sample brain that's a little bit more built out, just so uh, you can get the value of, of uh, why I want to segment this very, very large brain into a smaller topic specific brain. Um, I've got a new work colleague that's working with me and they are very interested in inheriting the responsibilities uh, of maintaining the focus for our client instant dynamics. So right now that's being handled by Fred. Maybe Fred is moving on to another department and this new person is gonna be taking over um, everything happening with this particular client. Now, here in my brain, I have information on every client that we own. I've got my own notes on meetings that we have together, action items for myself to do. My new colleague that I'm training is solely focused on Instant Dynamics Corporation. So I'd like to share my brain with them, but all everything else, aside from what you see on the screen right now, for this other person would simply be clutter. Uh, they don't need it. They need to know about instant dynamics. What history do we have together? Let's look at all of our 2020 contracts and post contracts, et cetera. But I don't need to know anything about all of these other clients or this is a pretty large brain, all the massive amounts of information in, in other areas of this brain. So I'm going back to that control click feature on a Windows machine, command click on a Mac. I control click on instant dynamics and I add this one thought here into my selection box. Now, I also want all the child thoughts, all their child thoughts, the, all of their child thoughts and so forth. So it might go two, three, four, five generations down. I can click, now that I have this one thought here in my selection box, I'm gonna have the brain sort of crawl through the, the data for me and populate this selection list. So I click on edit and select the option to select related thoughts. So I'm gonna add to the selection box all child thoughts. I can go parent, I can go jump. So many different options for this sample, all child thoughts. We'll say um, 12 generations away. Now I can also add or remove. So you can really play around with the selection box and add things in, move things out if you need to. 
Uh, for now, I'm building it up. So I'm adding into the selection box, 12 generations, all the child thoughts below Instant Dynamics Corporation. And I can include uh, the current active thought. I can also include thought types and tags that might appear down there as well. So great, I'll get those. And I'll say okay. And as you can see, uh, I've now selected and populated my selection thought with 115 thoughts. That would have taken a little bit of time to say, all right, now everything underneath reach out. Okay, now everything underneath each one of these thoughts, sometimes there's one, sometimes there's five, sometimes they even have child thoughts. So we went uh, from Instant Dynamics 12 generations down, added to the selection box. I'm gonna share two different things with you really quickly. First off, let's say I'm turning in a term paper or my boss wants to see an outline of a project that I'm working on, or I wanna see an outline of the project that I'm working on. Um, I can copy as a text outline. You can copy with notes or just without notes, text outline. So I have this information on my clipboard and I am going to open just notepad for now. I could open Word, notepad opens up faster and I right, or here, I'll right click and paste. And notice that the outline retained all of the, the structure. So underneath Instant Dynamics is my 2020 expectations, my all for one ad campaign, down, that, down below this, et cetera. So everything below this particular thought, 12 generations is all here in this outline. So it's a really nice way to just get a, a text uh, whoops, a text outline of, of that information, but I can also copy this into a new brain. Remember my new colleague is coming along. I'm gonna right click and I wanna copy those thoughts and I'm copying everything. I'm copying the thought, uh, the thought type, the thought tags, the link information, the notes, the file attachments on these 115 thoughts. So now I'm gonna click on file and select to create a new brain. And I'll call this brain for Sally. That's a weird name. It's just what came to, <laughs> to mind. This is a new brain, uh, digital brain. I should have said digital brain for Sally. Um, so Sally is gonna get all of the information on instant dynamics. Remember, I copied that information. It's still on my clipboard. All I need to do now that I've created this new brain is I right click and I paste 115 thoughts. It's a lot of data. There's a lot of file attachments and, and uh, graphics and images and notes. Um, so as you can see, the brain is working. And in just a moment, I'll have a child thought, ideally under uh, the brain for Sally, and it'll go into instant dynamics and have all of instant dynamics child thoughts for 12 generations down below. So my brain is behaving a little bit slowly right now. We'll just give it time to populate that. I may have bitten off a big chunk. I've done this in the past with other brains that are upwards of uh, 5,000 or, uh, or even 10,000 thoughts. I usually don't copy chunks that large, but I have in the past, uh, someone wanted my recipe area of, of my brain. And that was a lot of information. Um, so notice it applied the colors and the backgrounds as well which don't quite apply in this brain. So I might wanna play around with this a little bit with the colors, because anytime you create a new brain, the brain will randomly select a different background. Uh, so I'll just fix that really quickly. I'll say brain theme and change this over to that same light blue. Maybe we'll have time to talk about themes and wallpapers. Ah, that looks much better. So here's everything that you saw in that last brain, just under the instant dynamics area ready to go, ready to share with Sally. How am I gonna share this brain? I can sync it online and send her the URL. So, uh, or if she uses the brain as well, we all use the brain at our company. So I'm just gonna send her an archive, a brain archive. I click on file, select backup to brain archive. This is a really great way to back up your brain as well. I can just zip this entire brain up and keep it protected with my login information. Sally is gonna be uh, unlocking it. So I'm gonna say anyone can unlock this. I'll save this on the desktop. 
and it's a fairly large brain. I bit off a little bit uh, more than I should have, but that, that zip went very quickly. So here's the file that I'll send off to Sally and she'll have a copy of, of this particular brain. So now let's talk about imports. We just exported a section of a very large brain into a separate brain, compacted it into a brain archive that we could send over to uh, Sally to extract in her brain. Um, let's do an import into this particular brain. Um, I'm just gonna pick an area, new media blitz, that's all about bikes. I've got an outline of bikes that I'm bringing in. So I've got my thought bikes and the information that I have that, that I'm populating this particular area with already exists. So the brain has many different import capabilities. And that's what I wanna share with you now is that I can open up uh, on my desktop, got some sample maps. Um, and if you wanna see all the different imports, I won't have time today to run through each and every one, but just click on file, import, and you can review the different file types that can be imported into the brain. I'm gonna import a text file. I'm gonna go through the process a little bit differently than clicking on import here. Uh, but you can review the different features that work in a text. Um, XML imports come from older versions of the brain, but you can also import other mind mapping applications. Some mind mapping applications have limits on the number of, I think they call them nodes that can be created. And when you hit that 255 node limit, the, the I, I almost called it the brain, the mind map can't get any larger. So there's no limit mind mapping with the brain. You can take that MMAP file or the free mind file MM and import that into the brain to carry on growing that, that mind map larger and larger. So here I'm gonna import by actually opening the document. I'm gonna open an Excel spreadsheet. I was gonna do a uh, text file, but I didn't see the file I was looking for here. So we'll do an Excel spreadsheet, um, but a properly formatted Excel spreadsheet properly formatted Word document that's tab delineated, um, or even just a plain TXT file that's properly formatted can be imported into the brain. So if you have the output from a database that you want to visualize in the brain, uh, yes, you can bring that into the brain. It's a manual process, uh, but you can import it by importing a properly formatted file. I will share this with you until, uh, uh, and that's the last thing that I'll share, and then I'll import this. Um, if you're looking for a sample file, you want a copy of this file, send a note into support at thebrain.com, and I will send you this file that we're looking at right now so you can see exactly how an Excel spreadsheet uh, can and should be structured, or a TXT file, a mind map file, what have you. Um, so in this scenario, I'm gonna actually copy this onto my clipboard. So I select copy, I copied the cells that are populated. And notice, let's just take a quick look, green people. So this is all about environmentalists, people that are alive, people that are deceased. We'll look at William Morris. He's, I've read a few of his books in the past, really interesting character. As you can see, I have him labeled as one of my favorites. I've got the Wikipedia page that's all about William Morris and one of his favorite quotes. And I know the quote off the top of my head, have nothing in your house uh, that is neither beautiful or useful. So sort of a minimalistic approach to, uh, to living. Regardless, I've copied that onto my clipboard. This has nothing to do with bikes. I'm gonna create a new child thought called green people or environmentalists. And under environmentalists, I right click and I've got that information on my clipboard and I right click and paste text outline. So that only appears there when the brain notices, oh, you've got something on your clipboard that's properly formatted. And here we are, we've got our thought green people, people that are alive, people are, that are deceased. I'm looking for my good friend, William Morris. I have a little, his quote in the notes. When I hover over his thought, I see that he's my favorite. And here is the uh, Wikipedia page on good old William Morris, all associated with this thought. So there's a lot of data that you can bring into your brain through imports and populate brains very, very quickly through some of our other advanced features. 
Um, and then let's take a look. I see we're coming right up on top of the hour and we've got a lot of great questions coming in. Um, but I had uh, just one more thing to uh, share with you today. And that is, uh, yes, I did want to talk a little bit more about forgetting and deleting content in the brain as well. Um, and sort of reviewing. So another sort of focus on uh, how you can utilize uh, the brain's uh, history and reports. So first off, forgetting and deleting. A lot of times we you know, create areas of the brain and we realize, you know what, I don't need this information anymore. So we are no longer going to be doing uh, a webinar that's all about environmentalists and green people for our new media blitz for my company. Uh, typically what I would do in this brain is I'd archive this. I'd create an archive area, link up environmentalist archive, unlink it from media blitz and leave it over there in case I need to use it later. In this scenario, let's, let's go ahead and just delete it. So I am going to control click on environmentalists. I'll quickly select everything below environmentalists. Uh, so I click on edit and select related thoughts, child word for 12 generations down, okay. So there's everything that came in from this document and I'm gonna right click and select to forget. So I forget those nine thoughts and poof, they're no longer being visualized here in this area of the brain. They're forgotten, not deleted. And the forget feature within the brain application is really the brain's way of having a recycle bin in case you want to recover that data it's still there and you can still access it i like to do that through reports so i'm going to click on a little icon to open up my reports and say all right reports 117 thoughts in this brain show me all of my forgotten thoughts and there they are there's nine forgotten thoughts i can click and review do i really want to delete the thought for john james audubon as soon as I click on one of my forgotten thoughts, I get this little tab appearing above the brain reminding me, hey, you're viewing forgotten thoughts right now. Um, and they just simply appear, as you can see, click my way back up, a little bit grayed out. They don't have the black text, they're in a gray text. That's a forgotten thoughts. If I close the report and close this viewing tab, I'll no longer see them in the Plex. So now I can review them. And if I see a thought that I don't like, sorry, William, right click will now permanently delete this thought. So I can remember it from here or I can permanently delete it. So remember it, reactivate it. When you need it, now it's gone. It's deleted, attachments are gone, its notes are gone. You can undo the delete for a small period of time. I can click on edit, undo, and I can undo that delete until this brain sinks to the cloud. As soon as I sync my brain to the brain cloud, it sort of refreshes that undo list. I can't undo anything. Deleted thoughts are permanently deleted. Um, so make one of those backups of your brain before you do these mass changes that I'm sharing with you. Hey, I'm gonna go and do some gardening and delete 10,000 thoughts in my 100,000 thought brain. Make a backup, click on file and go into uh, backup to brain archive and make a backup in case during your delete process, you make a human error and delete something you don't want to delete. You can always roll back to that BRZ to salvage that information. So once again, I can right click over from here and permanently delete thoughts, or I can say, all right, I've reviewed everything in my forgotten thought list. I am going to delete everything. So all thoughts in this particular brain are that are forgotten are now delete and they're permanently gone. There's also a shortcut Final thing that I'll share with you before we go into QA, there's a shortcut for deleting a thought. And uh, once again, it's that simple little shift key. If I right click on a thought in my brain, I'll always have the option to forget it. Uh, we didn't by default put delete in this list because if I wanna unlink a thought, but I'm in a hurry and my mouse is moving and I click to unlink and I click on the wrong thing, you've just deleted a thought if delete was there. So there's an extra step, and that is quite simply the shift key. I hold down shift on my keyboard, press on shift, right click, then I can delete. So you can permanently delete a thought that way as well. 
Um, and with that, there were a few more features that I wanted to share with. We'll see if they come up in the question panel, but it looks like we are right on top of the hour. So um, if you can stay with me, um, and Jay, if you want to just text those to me or you can come on the phone, whichever works for you, whatever uh, great questions that we have, let me yeah, know. Yeah, I can. Uh, great, thanks, Jay. Um, hey, yeah, uh, yeah, I if, can jump on. Okay, great, thanks, Jay. So um, if anyone does have to jump off the call now that we're on top of the hour, I just wanna say thank you for uh, sharing this time with me today. It's always a pleasure to uh, introduce people to the brain, but I really, really enjoy sharing some of these advanced features with knowledgeable brain users. And I'm really excited to get into the question panel because they can sometimes challenge me a little bit depending on what these questions are. So if you can stay with us, please do. If not, thanks for joining me today. And you can always reach us in the future at support at thebrain.com. So Jay, I'm ready to be challenged. Fire away, what right. is our first question? Uh, great, so yeah, I will say there were a lot of questions that came in, so um, I tried to get to a lot of them that I could, but if I uh, may have missed some of, question, some of the questions that you guys sent in, uh, feel free to send us an email to support at thebrain.com. We can answer those questions there as well. Uh, but one that you know we get all the time that I just got right now, I figured we can start with that one, is uh, will the, will, will the uh, recording be emailed to the attendees? So I, I figure we get that one quite often. So yeah, it, uh, if you wanna talk about that real quick. <laughs> sure, uh, yes, today's webinar is being recorded and we'll try to get that recording up tomorrow and um, on our homepage uh, at www.thebrain.com, you'll find the link there. We'll keep it up there for a week or two, but also all attendees today uh, will get an, a thank you email with a link to the recording. So you can watch all of this at your own pace. I was really trying to cover a lot of ground today, so you might wanna slow things down uh, and watch this again. So yes, that will be available to you, absolutely. Great. Uh, so one of the really useful ones that I thought came up um, that I don't think you actually covered at all during this, though I think it's it's pretty important, uh, is how to move multiple thoughts to a new destination. So you mentioned, you know, kind of dragging one thought around. Uh, you also mentioned unlinking and linking to a different destination. But uh, if you just have like a whole collection of thoughts that you want to move, I, I mean, I use the selection window and I unlink, go to the destination link there. Uh, but if you want to kind of just show that, I think that would be uh, a pretty useful feature to mention. Absolutely. And I think we talked about this very, very early on. You know, I can control click on individual thoughts um, or I can control click and control drag to select a large grouping of thoughts. So there's many ways to populate this selection area. But when you do, let's say I've got a few additional, or I'm just gonna pick, um, you know, can make that list as large or small as you want. I'm just gonna pick two here. So Delta and Epsilon, control click and add the to my selection box. Sadly, Delta and Epsilon are no longer VIP clients. Um, so I'm gonna create underneath clients. I've added them selection box, moved on. Under clients, um, I'm gonna have uh, client archives. Now, I'm not going too far away, like the VIP clients are right over there, uh, but let's say it's just a, in a completely different area of my brain. Maybe I don't want this under clients, I've got it somewhere else. Regard where this thought happens to be, I can navigate to this thought, and if I right click, I can link Delta and Epsilon as uh, child thoughts of client archives. And remember that shift key? I'm gonna hold down the shift key when I select that. Oh, that doesn't work there. I challenged myself and, uh, and didn't rise to the occasion. So you can see the original link is still there. VIP clients, there's Delta and Epsilon. So I'm just gonna right click and unlink those. So right click and right click. So it didn't take too long. Um, I've got this other area of my uh, client archives. Why are they not there? Oh, I unlinked the wrong one. I'm getting myself confused. Right click, I'll link as children. There we go. And then I unlink from VIP. So today oh, is all wow. about making mistakes in them, and I think we've done that. So there so, we go. Uh, Matt, what thoughts I to a different area of the brain. 
what I usually do that I think um, you know might make that a little bit simpler when I gather the thoughts into the selection window I immediately do the unlink then because then you can just right click in the selection window and say unlink but then sure, you have sure. to be careful not to you know maybe close that brain because now you know you have a bunch of orphan thoughts so don't uh, get sidetracked it's, yeah right, exactly <laughs> if I yeah. add these to the selection box right click unlink selection and oops I got distracted right. on a, my phone conversation. What thoughts did I have in the selection box? They're orphan thoughts now. They're not linked to anything. How will I ever find them? Um, I can click to open up my reports and you can run a report for orphan thoughts. There they are, Delta and Epsilon, just sort of floating out there as satellites within my brain. And then I can meticulously say, okay, these are my going into my client archives. There's Delta many different ways to uh, to move those thoughts around absolutely all right great uh another feature that came on uh that i got a question on was the hidden ordering uh feature which i don't think we touched on but if you want to quickly just show how you can use that to sort uh to sort thoughts absolutely so the hidden ordering feature is a really really quick and easy way and it's unobtrusive um, it allows you to create some structure to groupings of thoughts, a flow, an order, uh, but without any visual uh, sort of hurdles. And what I mean by that is, let's say there's a process that you need to follow for Delta, phase one, phase two, phase three. You don't want to write phase one, phase two, phase three all over. Um, so I can say dot. Now I can say dot one, dot two, dot three. I'm sharing with you my process. I think Jay does this as well. Um, I skip a few, 5, 10, 15, 20, and the reason why I do that is so that I can weave in other steps along the way. So the first step for, uh, maybe I'm marking off the steps to bring Delta back as a customer. So step one is to uh, find a new contact. Uh, step two is going to be dot 10 for me. Um, um, uh, send new sales reports. Step three is going to be Chin. Have, did they receive it? So that's dot 15 in my five uh, spacing of five uh, process. So step 15 or step three is going to be uh, check in. And so notice these are following in order one, two, and then we move to the next column, three, et cetera. Um, if another step comes along, and also if that hidden ordering system wasn't there, the dot and then the number, obviously check in would be first because alphabetically that comes first, but that's not step one. Step one is to find a new contact at this company. Maybe there's a new step one, and that is to research their sales earnings. So I want to see if we even want them as a customer anymore. So I'm gonna weave this in, this is the new step one, and without having to rename everything else, I just say dot O3. And so that is my new first step. Research their sales earnings, we like it, find a new contact, send sales, and then check in. And that's the hidden ordering system. And again, if we just control click to look at the, oops, not control click, I'm sorry. If we command click. Alt click, there we go, alt click to open up the thought properties display. Um, I see the full thought name is dot zero three, research their sales earnings. I like to add the zeros and skip a few to weave other ones in. Some people just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can then go 10, 11, one, two, et cetera, will come bo before 10, 11, so it'll figure that out for you. Um, but that's just my, my process for the hidden ordering system in the brain. Great, great. Um, so yeah, I got another quick question that was uh, converting a thought to a type and why. Well, it was really, uh, the question was the person had a thought and they had children thought that they wanted to have the same attributes as the parent thought. So they yeah. attached, they pasted a URL and the URL icon was on the parent thought. They wanted it on the children thought. Um, and there's no way to kind of copy, uh, like a pasted URL that's automatically derived by the brain, there's no way to kind of copy that and put it on other thoughts. So uh, right. I guess that would be one of those scenarios where you might consider turning that thought into a type to, to kind of pass on the attributes. 
sure, there's a lot of different reasons. You know, you're setting up your brain, you're reviewing it, and you say, gosh, I've got this area for VIP clients. These should all be clients, but VIP should, because I've got other clients. I've got archive clients. I've got secondary clients. Uh, this should be a thought type. There's a lot of different reasons why you'd want to change something from a thought type to a thought tag. Even in my own brain, at one point, I had urgent action items as a thought type. It later became obvious to me in my own brain that urgent action items should be a tag, an attribute of another thought that might be a thought type. So I had to change that. And the brain allows you to quickly change that just by right clicking and saying, all right, VIP clients is, I'm gonna convert. So you can, there's three different categories. I call it native, uh, native thought, a thought type and a thought tag. So VIP, it's got square edges. That's a native thought in the brain. I'm gonna make this a thought type, okay? Those rounded edges, and you can see instantly it inherited all the attributes of a VIP client. So it's got the little gold star that appears there. And when I mouse over, they're VIP clients. And now I can control click, select them up to my client thought. I right click link as children. So there's all my VIP clients. I'm gonna unlink VIP. So I'm doing this really quickly. It's all features that I've shared with you today. And I right click on my VIP client thought type, now thought type, and I uncheck the option to make it visible. So really quickly, I moved everybody under clients. I can clearly see who my VIPs are. And now I can even, if I want, same with client you know, archive clients or secondary clients, what have you. Great, great, perfect. Um, I think uh, other than that, we just had some questions. That's not, this is more of like an opinionated question, right? Um, so the person asked, uh, what is the biggest error that users that users usually make when dealing with the brain? So uh, to put it another way, what do many users fail to realize regarding the brain? Yeah, I love that, a, a theoretical question. Um, I think, personally, I think um, that people go into the brain um, thinking that it has to be done right the first time. And that's what this webinar is, is all about, going back and editing and changing and modifying your brain. Um, so many times we get people that write in, you know, should a thought be a thought type or a thought tag? Should a thought be a, a child thought or a jump thought? Should I create one brain or multiple smaller topic specific brains. There's no right or wrong. You can approach it whichever way you'd like and you can always come back at a later date and modify and say, you know what, I should have just created one massive brain. I, I don't sync it to the cloud. I only use this one machine. And so I just want one massive brain. Merge your BRZs or your brain zips, brain archives, merge them all together. You've got one massive brain. Oh, the opposite end of that, I created one massive brain. Now I want to share part of my brain with Jay or part of my brain with uh, a work, another work colleague. Then you can segment out smaller sections of your brain, copy them and paste them into smaller brains that can be shared. It's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to change your mind and do the type of gardening things that we're, we're covering today. So very relevant question uh, for today. And thank you for, uh, for bringing that up. And of course, Along those lines, um, if you're thinking, gosh, I think the biggest mistake in the brain that I made was X, Y, Z, whatever that subject is or that, that issue may be, contact us at support at the brain .com. Um, You know, the brain is, is uh, the folks at the brain and the support team at the brain, we're always there for you and ready to hear uh, what questions that you may have and uh, provide solutions. When you see that a person is popping up on our website saying, hey, this is, uh, this is Jared, how can I help you today? Jared is on the other end of, of that message. So you can talk to a real person um, at any time when you're checking in on our website with the, with the brain. So we're happy to help you at any time in the future. And I did see, I know uh, Jay, it sounded like that was the last question, but I saw one other one that came up that I wanted to demo and it's all, out, all about context sensitive naming. I didn't get a chance to cover that today. so. Um, I'm glad I, I happened to notice that context sensitive naming is a way of inheriting the parent thought uh, 
on a commonly used parent. And I actually set up a demo today for this, but didn't get a chance to show it off. So I am gonna jump back over into my, oh no, I was in the right area under my clients. Um, so let's say for example, alpha, beta, uh, gamma, theta, all of these clients are gonna have subcategories for um, you know, their marketing reports or where did I leave that note here on beta? marketing plan or budget, uh, the one outlook and context. I want these four child thoughts underneath every thought that is a client, whether they're a VIP or not. Uh, but if under beta, I just start creating child thoughts for marketing plan, budget, one year outlook, contacts. And I do that for each client. I'm gonna have multiple thoughts with the same name. And in the future, I may have hundreds of different clients and if I do a search for the word marketing plan, I'm gonna see hundreds of different marketing plans and I'd have to navigate to that thought to see who that marketing plan is for. So we alleviate that by allowing you to add a comma in the thought name. And if you add it while you're creating the thought, it's also gonna save you some time. So in other words, under beta, if I just say comma marketing plan, you can see I've got a thought called marketing plan, but the full thought name, when I hover over the thought, this is my beta mark plan. Um, and so if I do the same for alpha, comma, whoop. So this is my alpha marketing plan. So it inherited the parent name. I can comma down below, so comma 2020. And this thought is going to be called my alpha marketing plan for 2020. So I can continuously grab the parent thought name above and apply it to the full thought name below. I typically don't go more than two or three generations down with this, uh, but we've got a marketing plan for 2020. Um, I'm probably gonna have a name for that marketing plan. This is called, you know, see the world is the name of our sort of marketing theme uh, that we have for uh, uh, for 2020 for our client alpha. Um, so I would end then with the, the comma deck. But as you can see, I pasted on beta, pasted that in, so I'm gonna copy that and sort of use this as a template. I saw that question come in too, so I do this quite often. Um, I'll click and drag and paste that right in and hit enter. I've got semicolon for multi individual thoughts and the comma to inherit the parent name. I'll do that under gamma. And theta as well. So really quickly, I'm just using that uh, semicolon uh, comma line there as a template. So all of my clients have their own thought for their budget, their contacts, their marketing plan. And when I do a search for marketing plan, let's close my report and do a search for marketing plan. There we go, there's my beta marketing plan, alpha, uh, eta, eta, eta or eta, I don't even know, and my gamma, So there and theta down below. So I can clearly see which marketing plan is for which particular customer just by running a report or by reviewing thought, thought list down below. So that's all done with the comma. And uh, I think that's the last feature. Jay, you did a great job of answering questions out there today. So thank you everyone for joining us. I can see we're well over the hour now. And, uh, and so we'll wrap things up. Thank you again for joining us today. Everyone will receive a link to the recording uh, for today's webinar. Once again, we're always available for you. Support at thebrain.com. Happy to answer any additional questions that you may have. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Enjoy the rest of the, your week and as always, enjoy your brain. Thanks everyone.